Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, Good to Know Shreveport Bossier. This is a podcast showcasing all the good things, the positive things happening around our community, the Shreveport Bossier area. My name is Jeff Bynfor. Over here is Paul Reeser. He's my co-host. I'm stuck with him, so we make the best of it. He's a member of the Committee of 100. Uh, in every podcast, we focus on uh, topics and initiatives that do, as I said, have a positive impact on the community. We have new episodes available every other Wednesday, and you can find Good to Know wherever you listen to podcasts. So with that, I'll let Paul do the honors, as always, and introduce our special guest. Well, thank you, Jeff. An honor, as always. Uh, but of before, before I do the introduction, i got to ask you a question. Do you uh, know where the headquarters for the national, the American Rose Society is? I'm just going to take a shot. Shreveport? Shreveport. <laughs> How about that? It's not just the Shreveport Rose Center, it's the American Rose Center okay. right here in Shreveport. And they bring so much commerce and so much interesting things to the area. They're doing millions of dollars worth of renovations. I didn't know all this stuff, but I'm excited because today we're going to find out. <laughs> You're, you probably already know. Jeff knows so much. Well, I know that a rose by any other name smells just as sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and a poet. Uh, but anyway, today we have the uh, the Publications Director for the American Rose Society, Miss Beth Smiley. Beth, thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. And we've been trying to get you on the show actually for a very long time. You're a, you're a very busy woman. We're pretty busy out there. <laughs> There's lots of things going on. So tell us what's going on. Well, uh, where do I start? <laughs> um, right well, now, we'll, I'll just go ahead and say, you know, because everybody's expecting it, is that we are ramping up for Christmas in Roseland. Sure. And Christmas in Roseland is celebrating 40 years in the community this year. Well, before we <laughs> talk more about Christmas, which is uh, going to be a highlight, obviously, you mentioned millions in renovations. So what, 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 what's that all about? What's going on? We just finished a little over five-year renovation of the gardens. It was $2.2 million. Okay. Um, mm. We took out 150 trees so that the roses would get the sunshine that they love. Wow. Um, and then, as I said, and it's debt free. We raised it the wow. money as we were building it. Nice. It is absolutely stunning. And it is the only garden in America that tells the history of the rose throughout time. So you start with modern day roses, and as you walk through the circles, you go back in time, back to the species roses that started everything. Well, I'm just a dummy, so uh, the history of the, I mean, to me, you know, I guess most people, like me, would think it's a flower, it grows. Right. Uh, so what's the <laughs> history of the rose? Well, you can trace the rose back to China. There were eight China studs, as they call them, and all the roses come from that. Hmm. Well. The, the facility itself, it does draw a lot of people in. So yes. for, for our business listeners out there, which is a lot, uh, what's the economic impact of the Rose Center? I know Christmas is coming up, that's a big yes. deal, but all year round there's things going on. Yes. And internationally as well, come on. Yes, so we do have visitors that come <laughs> from all over the world actually to see our gardens because mm -hmm. roses are not just loved in America, they're loved all over the world. There mm -hmm. are national rose societies in almost every country that you can think of. So there is the World Federation of Rose Societies of which the American Rose Society belongs to. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone is the same. We all, they all love roses, but they also want to preserve roses. They want to see roses continue and to be loved and appreciated. I mean, are roses in danger? There are roses that are in danger of, there yeah. are roses that have gone extinct. Really? Yes. Huh. And part of what the American Rose Society does is um, one of our missions is to preserve roses. So, so the, the ones that have gone extinct, do you try to bring them back somehow? If we can, if you can find one plant mm -hmm. on the face of the planet, there's still hope. And there's not something that you can do artificially. You have to have the real deal, huh? Yes. Huh. You have to have like the Jurassic thing. Park for roses. Right? <laughs> That's it. There but you go. <laughs> no, you cut down how many hundreds or hundreds of trees you said. Why did you have to cut down all those trees? Well. The gardens have been there for 50 years, and when they first built the gardens, they were very small. It was very mm -hmm. little pockets of gardens. Over the years, as you can imagine, the pine trees have gotten enormous. Well, the roses were suffering from the pine trees gathering all the water and, and the shade. So it was just a decision. 
were there to promote the rose and mm -hmm. to show the rose in its glory. So mm -hmm. that meant the trees had to go away. Uh, I remember it seemed like there was, what's wrong with the roses? And then it's like, oh, there's too much shade. Roses yes. love the sun. Yes. So yeah, that was part of the rent, that was part of the two and a half million dollars? Well, that was actually the first step. And mm -hmm. um, it was lovely that at the time we had um, a membership director working for us who actually had a timber management degree or something. And there, the very next parcel of land next to the Rose Center, they mm -hmm. were clearing their land. So he just walked out there and stopped them on their machines and said, hey, let's talk about what you can do for us and what <laughs> we can do for you. And they were mm -hmm. very amenable. They came out. They actually came and cut down a lot of trees for us and they just took the lumber as payment which was wow. okay. really great for mm -hmm. everyone. <laughs> really? <laughs> Alright so uh, I, I, I'm ashamed to admit it but I've never been to the American Rose Center so as a newbie if I'm coming there for the first time describe the experience what's it like? Well, what do I, I see? Right well I want you to come during peak bloom which is mid-April to mid-May or this year is probably going to be pretty late and it's going to be kind of sparse because of the drought. Okay. Uh, but we, you, when you come in, you are going to see every type of rose. Um, when you come in the gates, there's big, tall rambler roses on big towers. Mm -hmm. So, and then when you come in, you come through the building, you get a map, you come out. When you start the circles, you start with the modern roses. These are brand new roses to the market. Okay. okay. Then as you go through, you're going to go to 20th century, 19th century roses, and then you're going to go down into shrubs. And then when you get to the fourth circle, which is enormous, you're going to get back to those species roses. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to see, like I said, there are 18 classes of roses. Mm -hmm. Normally people just don't understand that. They're I don't like, understand Whatever that. <laughs> the florist is, yeah. what you get from the florist, that's a rose. But those are hybrid teas and they're lovely. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little more finicky to grow. Okay. Um, shrubs are much easier to grow. Species roses are the kind you can throw out on a fence line yeah. and they'll take over and they're beautiful. But they tend to bloom one time a year. So when we walk in, do we just see a sea of uh, colors all over the place? You and, will. And how does it smell? <laughs> it, it's amazing. Is it? I used to tell people in the springtime is my favorite, right? Because those species roses that I was saying, that they're, a lot of them are one time bloomers. The spring is their show, right? Mm -hmm. But they are just, you can just walk through the garden. You don't have to get near a rose, just walk through and you're the just, aroma is, yes, mm -hmm. it's just, heady. Yeah. It really is. Uh, it's yeah, just amazing. Yes. And is, is the spring the best time to experience that? It really is. The colors with the aroma? Yes. Okay. How yes. big is the garden? How long does it take to walk through? You could do it pretty quickly. Um, but Give you want to take time, time to stop and smell yes, the roses. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I would have thought to say that. <laughs> of course. Um, I mean, you could do it in 30 minutes. I'd give yourself an hour to walk around. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a genius idea because I've always heard the Rose Center, we're going to go at Christmas. I'm like, well, there's no roses at Christmas. Why? why? But you guys got really creative. So yes. the spring is when people come to see the flowers. But what do we come and see at Christmas time? Right. So Christmas in Roseland was created by the executive director at the time. Basically, before they had Christmas in Roseland, they had mm -hmm. to let the garden staff go because there was no way to pay them. Mm -hmm. So they created Christmas in Roseland to keep them employed mm. and keep them, I mean, you hate to have all that knowledge walk out the door every year, right? right? Yeah. And then hire again. So they switch in September, we start putting up lights. They still take care of the grounds, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. sure. They're still weeding and mowing and everything else pruning to be done but they put up the lights they start in september and they don't really stop through christmas and roseland they're still you know always fiddling with lights until mm. the very end of christmas and roseland really mm. yep and then it still takes them two months to take it down <laughs> wow. yeah. it's a it's a huge show it's I, huge. I mean people just line up how how long is the line you think for people to come and right. drive through we're addressing that this year we're actually letting people come in pretty far into the gardens before you actually pay. So we can get people off the road. Mm -hmm. It's just a dangerous situation. There are a lot of salt water trucks going up and down Jefferson Page now. And so we want to get people off the road. How so much does it cost to go through at Christmas? It's $10 a person, or we have a $30 family pack per this car? year. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. well. Yep. That's a good idea. I yeah. think I'm, I'm going to do that this Christmas. You should. And come on a Saturday night in December. Every Saturday in December, we're having fireworks. 
Really? Yes. Wow, you guys are going all out. Well, it's our 40th anniversary, so okay. four Saturdays of fireworks. 40th anniversary. Yes. For the Christmas yes. aspect of it. Yes. Is there is there wassail and, and eggnog <laughs> and so forth? There is hot chocolate for hot sale. Chocolate. There you go. That's better anyway. <laughs> and you can roast marshmallows on our, we have a, a marshmallow roasting pit built just for Christmas in Roseland, and you can nice. roast marshmallows. So, uh, do you, I mean, do you still see roses while all this other stuff's going on? Yeah, there are still roses there because because we have such a moderate climate, roses will bloom through December. Okay. They'll actually bloom if we don't have a hard freeze like we did last year. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll cut roses off in February when we prune. Well, wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So that, that seems like a great way to spend a, a, a night at Christmas time to me. It's, a, it's very lovely. I tell people all the time, I've worked there for a very long time. And working at Christmas in Roseland, I normally take pictures of kids with Santa. Mm -hmm. And it just puts me in the spirit. Sure. It yeah. just gets me in the spirit. I mean, you're always looking for something to get out of the house, you know, right. and especially lights. Right. And if you can combine all those things together, you got a great time. Right. And walking around, and we have people come all the time. They say, My parents brought me here when I was a child, mm -hmm. and now I'm bringing my children here. It's a family tradition. Yeah. And if you can get Paul too. Reeser to come one night, he can be like your special guest and attract nobody. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want the crowds to be extra small, <laughs> announce I'll be there. So right. you can actually get out and park and come in. I never had thought to park at Christmas. We just kind of wind our way through, but you can. Oh yeah, that's what we tell people. We're not really a, a, a drive-through. We're really a park and walk through and experience it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Many of our new lights, anything we put in the last three or four years, all dance to music so there's always music oh, playing. Neat. I like that. Does it we go on your radio? Do you no, tune it it's in? just loud. It's out there. <laughs> it's, it's just loud. loud. <laughs> it's just loud. A lot, a lot like you. Yeah. <laughs> but we also have choirs come and perform and dance groups oh, come cool. and perform yeah. and stuff so yeah it's fun. It's We really try to have something for everyone out there. I'm definitely going to go this time. Do. You've talked me into Please it. Please come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll do it. But you're going to have to be there to give me a special tour. Well, just come in where Santa is and I'll probably be there taking <laughs> okay. pictures. Okay, that sounds <laughs> That's good. That's right. I have gone in. My children took pictures on Santa's lap. There you go. I may or may not have as well. You I know, was going <laughs> to ask. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very festive guy, Jim. <laughs> I'm getting the message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So right. <laughs> the rose preservation is, is a big aspect of it. I, mm -hmm. I want to talk about kind of like the scientific benefits that you contribute to the International Rose um, right. Society as, as a whole. So what are the, some of the things that people don't know about the Rose Center that you, you do out there to actually help out roses around the world? Right. So one thing the American Rose Society does is through research is one of the ways we help preserve roses. Mm -hmm. um, so we fund research. We have a trust that is just used to um, give funds to different universities that are having research projects go on. Mm -hmm. Texas A&M has an endowed rose chair. They're oh, doing wow. a lot on um, rose rosette disease, which is a it's a big problem um, around the country. So this mm -hmm. is a mite that gets on roses and absolutely destroys them. And once you have it in your garden, you really have to dig up your roses. But we've learned a lot in the last five years on it. And mm -hmm. it used to be, you have to dig them up, you have to put them in a plastic bag, you have to take them, you have to burn it. Um, and you can't, at first it was, you couldn't plant roses in that hole again for three years. Ooh, wow. Well, you can imagine gardens were like, yeah. um, wait, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah. Now we know you can just go ahead and plant your rose back because chances are when you dug your rose up, the mite went with it. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we talk about and we help fund research on roses. The other thing we are doing at the Rose Center is um, there's a very fascinating lady who lived in Washington who went around the world collecting rambler roses. Um, wait, wait, what, what kind? Rambler? Rambler. Rambler, rambler what? roses. Okay. We actually what does published that her book. Hold that up. Okay, I don't Ramblers. know. Yeah, I can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. So her so name what, is, wait, what does that mean, rambler roses? So these are roses that ramble. They, they have very long they're not, uh, arms. They're not. Oh. They're not a. They're not a hybrid tea, right? They're not this one long stem with one rose on I the end. I thought it might have meant like they would get move, up and go. No, no, not get up, and, <laughs> but you know, like maybe <laughs> propagate all around the world or well, something like that. Well, I mean, you probably could do that more easily with some of these, mm -hmm. but th this is more to their physical being, okay. right? They right. ramble. Okay. They, gotcha. You can plant it they and take space. They they need space. So she collected roses all around the world mm -hmm. um, and she had them all on her property in Washington. Okay. And many of these ramblers 
might not exist on the planet any longer had she not collected them. Wow, that's impressive. So years ago, some people found out about her collection and started talking about it. Mm -hmm. And um, some people in Texas kind of took charge and they recreated her collection in um, the city, Chambersville, I believe, Texas. Well, it was on a tree farm, and the tree farm was sold last year. Mm. So now they needed a home for the Ramblers. Okay. So we have them. Oh, nice. So we are propagating them, and we are then going to get them to nurseries around the country so that people around the country can start to plant these Ramblers so they won't disappear any longer. It won't be up to us just to have them here yeah. at the American Rose Center. Nice. We're gonna try to get them out into the country and let everybody else uh, grow and appreciate them. Yeah, that's impressive. It, so you don't just run your center, you help them spread them all around the country. Yes. Well, and there's some kind of competition, people oh, yeah. when they're creating new varieties of roses, how does that work? Yeah, so um, we are now a um, designated international rose trial. So this started about three or four years ago. Um, and what it is is hybridizers, people who create new roses, send us their roses to be tested for a two year span. And during that time, um, local people, as well as sometimes national people will come in and judge the roses. And then in, at, at two years later, they determine who the winners are. And next April, we're going to announce the next set of winners. Okay. So um, that makes news across the world. These roses nice. will make news across the world. That is fascinating. There's a lot of rose enthusiasts, I'm assuming, around the world. Yes. Besides Jeff. Yes. I love roses. <laughs> <laughs> so does my wife. <laughs> they cost a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, by the How? way, why do roses cost so much? Well, florist Good roses, it, it, that's a whole... It's a different world. Yeah. So florist roses are over here and garden roses are over here. Okay. Well, sorry, to, but I want to know. <laughs> no, this is good. So florist <laughs> roses, um, for the most part, come from perfect growing conditions in South America. Okay. And they're grown in houses and they're also imported into the United States and that's why they cost so much. Gotcha. Mm. So yeah. if you plant a rose next February, <laughs> you can have roses all year long. You then can I give can, your wife roses all year. There. Yeah. And it will cost me way less. Yes. So. Is it a challenge to grow roses in Louisiana? We have you a very, um, we have a pretty challenging um, climate. Uh, just our humidity is a factor. Mm -hmm. um, our rain is normally a factor this year, the lack of rain. Yeah. Um, That's for humidity sure. and our rain causes black spot, which will make all the leaves fall off your rose mm -hmm. if you don't do something about it. Um, but if a rose can stand it here, in a cooler climate, it's gonna do very well. What's the most popular kind of rose? Is there one you can say is? Um, it used to be the hybrid tea, actually, um, because people wanted the roses that look like what you get from a florist. Mm. But these days, people tend to go towards a shrub. It mm -hmm. gives you more blooms, okay. and they're a little easier to take care of. A shrub rose. A shrub rose. There's lots Actually, of different kinds. Actually, never heard of that. <laughs> there are different kinds of shrub roses, but um, there's one that stands out, and it's an English breeder. His name is David Austin Roses. Mm -hmm. it's five generations of this family have been breeding roses, and his roses are all, um, they're the old-fashioned looking roses. They have tons and tons of petals, but he, um, he really focuses on scent. So a lot of his roses are very, very aromatic and mm -hmm. just lovely. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So with roses being all over America, and I'm saying, like I say, it's a little bit of a challenge here. How in the world did we end up becoming the <laughs> the, the headquarters for yeah. the National Rose Society? It's a good story, actually. So we started in D.C. We moved to Pennsylvania for a while, where the father of the American Rose Society kind of started. He had a home there called Breeze Hill. Um, J. Horace McFarlane, if you ever have a minute, look him up. He's probably the most famous man you've never heard of. J. Horace McFarlane. J. Horace, Horace? Horace. 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 McFarlane. H O R S T. Come on, get with it. No, Horace. <laughs> oh, <You're> Horace. <laughs> <laughs> I should get with it. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Anyway, he yeah, is. I'm the, not, never with it. <laughs> he's the father of the American Rose Society. And um, he also worked for the national parks, like establishing the national park system and mm -hmm. things. He's a brilliant man. 
anyway, um, then we moved to Columbus, Ohio for mm -hmm. 20 years at the Park of Roses, and then they wanted their building back. So the American Rose Society said, well, we need a new home. Mm -hmm. And there happened to be a lady that lived in Shreveport who made it her mission, Ida Bell Hayden. Um, she made it her mission and she started talking to people like Virginia Sheehy. Mm. And the two of them got together. She gets things done. <laughs> the, they get things done. Yeah. So Virginia Sheehy sent her mother's plane to Ohio, picked up some people, brought them down here and looked at the land mm -hmm. that was proposed to be given to us. Mm -hmm. And the Thick Pen Herald families gave us the land when okay. our board said, yes, we nice. want to move here. Nice. So here we've been for 50 years. And Thanks you've to been there, Hayden and you've been there for 30. And I've been there for 30. Wow, yes. wow. you've seen most of it. <laughs> I've seen a lot of it, yeah. yes. <laughs> so for people that haven't been there, where, when or where do you go? How do you get there from here, from anywhere? I-20, exit five, take a right, there are signs. <laughs> take a left on Jefferson Page Road, go a mile and a half, and we're on the right. You can't miss us. Just There's west. a gigantic stone out front now. Mm -hmm. Channel 3 was very nice to us um, a number of years ago. Um, the bridge next on um, 80 was closed. It was being rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And truckers would turn on Jefferson Page Road thinking that that was a way back to the interstate. And evidently, all we can assume is that a truck tried to turn around in our entry and it mm -hmm. knocked our wooden sign over. Ah. So we said, you know what, we're gonna fix that. And we put a six or seven foot tall rock out front and put <laughs> our sign on it. Mm -hmm. So. Nobody's going to knock that then over. I was going to say, that, that's, that sounds like a safe sign. Yeah, no one's going to so knock that over. I would imagine at Christmas time, it's families, lots of families oh, yeah. coming out. Yes. And then during the rest of the year in the spring, who's your, who's your customer? Who normally is We have a out? lot of families. They come out. I mean, we do encourage they come people. Every week or do they just come once a year for their pilgrimage? Or? Right. Mostly on the weekends. Um, I would think once or twice. We mm -hmm. do have some school groups that come out and do um, field trips. We have a lovely um, scavenger hunt for them. They can look for certain things, mm -hmm. um, you know, certain kinds of bugs. And we have a dog print in the cement that they have to find. And, <laughs> um, so you've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad my mom gave me a lot of encouragement when I was young because well, Jeff yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's hammering at that. <laughs> he tests my self-confidence. Yeah, but I so like it's it. mostly families, but we like to yeah. tell them, bring a picnic, you know, and oh, come yeah. and stay and So enjoy. they can stay for a while. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah stay does all day. It, does it cost, is there an admission fee during the year? There is. $5 a person or $10 mm -hmm. a family. Okay. So, wow. I yeah, mean, that's a bargain. It's, it's a very affordable. Yeah. Very affordable. So we could pretend like we're brothers and we could get in for five bucks a piece. Yep. <laughs> Listen to him. Wait a minute, how much does it cost by yourself? <laughs> You're still scam the system, bucks. my friend. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Tell me a little bit more about uh, China <laughs> and the roses coming from China. I'm a little fascinated by that because, right. uh, you know, things aren't great between America and China right, right. now. So. so there is actually, um, we have n numerous people that go to China just to see their roses mm -hmm. uh, because of the history of that. Um, and China actually has a very big rose participation. There's, there are mm -hmm. lots of people there that do it. I mean, I guess you just have to want to go there and figure in. Yeah. Well, there's lots of people way. there, period. Right. So. And actually, the, the Japan Rose Society is large and has a lot of people mm -hmm. involved in it. They have hybridizers there as well who. Um, is there a Senate lot of roses. back and forth uh, talking between American rose enthusiasts and the people in China and Japan about what's the next step? How do we make better roses? Or right. I'm sure that the hybridizers talk to one another. I'm sure they have their own association, the Hybridizers Association, mm -hmm. and they talk to one another. Um, I'm sure there is a lot of talk within the World Federation of Rose Societies. Mm -hmm. um, the World Federation meets, of course, all over the world. They just met, they've met in France and South Africa and Japan and oh, wow. Australia. Mm -hmm. And next year they meet in um, Denmark, I believe. Okay. So um, they move around and they always have interesting talks. They always have people come in and talk about what they're doing in their country that's different and yeah. how the rest of us can follow. You bring speakers from around the world to the uh, Rose Center here and have them make presentations? or we. We just had a convention here in May, okay. and we did have a lot of speakers come in. I don't know that we had anybody here 
internationally. No. Well, just curious. But mm -hmm. a few years ago, we had um, the post office introduced a new stamp. I Peace, remember that, yes. You remember that? Yeah, I do, yes. The Peace Rose stamp, and the hybridizer of the Peace Rose, it was Francis Mion, and he's from France. Okay. And his granddaughter, granddaughter, I believe, came over for the Peace Rose ceremony. And we have a picture of Francis Mion on the wall because he was such so important mm -hmm. to Rose hybridizing. And I have a picture of her father looking at that picture. And then I got a picture of her looking at her father's picture, looking at her grandfather's <laughs> so It never stops. It never, it never stops. It's infinite. So, but it was just a very interesting yeah. family portrait. Yeah. Away. I do remember the, the stamp. I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. big deal. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, to be on the stamp is, yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. I don't think even Jeff's been on a stamp yet. No, not yeah. yet, but I've me had either. requests. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to stamp me out is what they're going to do. Well, are there a lot of members of the society? Are there people that, that come out to the meetings and so forth? Right. I hadn't, and, and local people that are interested just in roses think, oh, man, I should get into this society business. Right. Well, there is a Shreveport Bossier Rose Society, mm -hmm. and it meets once a month out at the Rose Center. You mm -hmm. can look on our website, rose.org, and they'll tell you all about it. Um, but yes, there are the American Rose Society has members, and over 200 came last May to the Rose Center. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had never been here, but they wanted mm -hmm. to come and see the renovations, so they said, okay, this is it, let's go. Mm -hmm. We've also had, um, because our presidents have all started to get really involved with Christmas and Roseland and mm -hmm. come, we've had our president that lived in New York come. Our president now lives in Wisconsin. She's been here a number of times. She's coming this year. She, and she's bringing her husband, and they're staying for a weekend and working at Christmas and Rosalind. They're Wrestling. working, holy yes. cow, nice. So we've had people come um, from Seattle, Washington, just to come and see Christmas and Rosalind. They've been for to see the roses in the spring, mm -hmm. but they came back to see Christmas and Rosalind. That's great. As well. I mean, you gotta get more people yes. out there. And, uh, yes. This is, is this kind of like a hidden gem? It's not a hidden, but it's, yeah. um, you gotta it's get more lot of interest out of generated. Right? I guess. Um, yeah. Tell yeah. me how to do that. Well, uh, <laughs> I would say get on one of the advertising most popular podcasts Podcasting. in the area. Yes. <laughs> this is and, our if and I'll, I'll get to the number of those people because yeah. it's not us. This yeah. is so. our marketing plan. Yeah. No, I just, I, it, I, I, I'm, I feel, I guess, a little ashamed that I've never been out there. I've certainly heard of it a Look, lot. But yeah. for the 30 years I've worked there, yeah. people say, oh, I come out there every year at Christmas in Roseland. Mm -hmm. What do you do during the rest of the year? <laughs> well, so. I, I read comic books, but that's in a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell people, bring your mom, bring your mom yeah. for Mother's Day, or bring your daughter, or bring your wife, perfect and just for walk around for Mother's Day. Perfect or, for Mother's Day. Yes, it's yeah. perfect. Come out and just walk and enjoy the gardens. Do you do specials, uh, like uh, luncheons or something like that on we Mother's Day? We have in the past. Yeah. Um, next year's our 50th anniversary, so who knows what we're going to dream right. up. Right. We're going to have a lot of different special things going on next year. Well, I think that's great. Sounds yes. like you're being innovative. We're just yes. about out of time. You mentioned your uh, website, rose.org. Pretty yes. hard rose. to remember. Rose.org, the simplest <laughs> website we've ever had on right? the show. Right, right. Yeah. Or christmasandroseland.org, and either one will get you to us. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Well, we appreciate you being with us Absolutely. here today. Absolutely. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Yeah, we learned Thank all you. kinds of stuff. I certainly did yeah, about yeah. Uh, one of the, I guess, the great attractions in the area that it is. Uh, I'm going to go take advantage of now. Please do. All right. Thanks very much. That's going to do it for this edition of uh, Good to Know Shreveport Bossier. Hope you learned a lot. I know I certainly did. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you again next time.